Today, I have something special for you that is appropriate for the month of May, because the month of May is the month of Our Lady. May is the month dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it is also the beginning of the Fatima, what I think of as the Fatima cycle or the Fatima period on the liturgical calendar. As we know, May 13th is the anniversary of the first apparition of Our Lady at Fatima. And May 13th is actually an interesting date in the history of Marian apparitions and Marian appearances and Catholic prophecy in general. A lot of things have happened on that date. But related to that in a way is what I have for you today. And that is an essay, or actually two short letters, by St. Maximilian Kolbe. He wrote these two two different fi uh, figures while he was in Japan in the 1930s. The first is um, on something called the Golden Thread. It's his response to the claim that some were making in his time that he was putting too great of an emphasis on the Blessed Virgin Mary and on the, on the Immaculate Conception for the Franciscan friars. So that is his response, and it's very interesting to listen to. And the second is his response to, or his expression of, what the purpose of total consecration to Our Lady is. And when he's referring to Blessed Grignion in the letter, he's talking about St. Louis de Montfort. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find this edifying. And remember that this is the month of Mary and the beginning of the Fatima period on the calendar. The Golden Thread by St. Maximilian Kolbe Across the snow-covered steppes of Siberia, we hear the above question, which is being echoed under the Polish sun about Nefakatlanau. But an answer full of gratitude comes from the plateaus of the Carpathians. Ask Our Lady. I think that nobody will take it amiss if, knowing something of this matter, I write in Viedomolski and take the opportunity to manifest my own thoughts about that question and that answer. First, I must state clearly that both the question above and the answer seem to me to be quite relevant, especially the question. To tell the truth, every reasonable person should know that the goal towards which he tends and should evaluate everything in view of that goal's intrinsic finality. Life is movement, tending to an end. A religious order lives if it has a well-defined purpose and actively seeks to achieve it. The generations which preceded us achieved the purposes that providence had assigned to them. The present generation of religious, too, must know its purpose, so that it may bring it about, and not draw down on itself the anathema of later generations, because it failed to construct anything solid on the foundations that the ancient fathers had bequeathed to it, something that could serve as a basis on which these later generations might raise up still higher ramparts. Thus, the present generation could delay the latter's progress. But to know what needs to be done at this moment, we have to know what had been done up to now. In other words, we must go back through the stream of history. Leaving aside various other types of activities, I intend to concentrate only on the promotion of devotion to the Immaculate. From the origin of the order, the golden thread of this cause unwinds throughout the centuries, wins its battles, and encounters difficulties. After more than six centuries, it attains a memorable victory, the recognition, binding on all, of the truth of the Immaculate Conception, the proclamation of the dogma. Is this cause now over and done with? Is a battle won because a battle plan has been drawn up and approved? Is an architect satisfied when he has completed the blueprints for a house, or does he not rather consider these as a simple preliminary to the building of the edifice itself? Those nearly seven centuries of our history are nothing but the groundwork of the true operation, the indispensable condition for setting about the real task. What task? The task of making this truth come to maturity, by sowing it in the hearts of all and of each individual, beginning with our own, the task of our involvement in bringing about the spiritual growth of so souls and the fruits of their conversion. During her apparitions at Lourdes, the Immaculate, using the very language of our Lord, her proclaimed, Penance! 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 She was refreshing the memories of us members of the Order of Penance. She wishes within it, and by means of it, to stop souls in their mad rush towards pleasure. She wants to enter into their hearts and take possession of them, to direct them towards true happiness, 
towards God by the road of self-abnegation. She longs to prepare in them the throne of divine love for the divine heart of Jesus, to teach them to love it, to enkindle love in them. She herself wants to love that heart in them and by them. She wants to become one with them and make them one with herself. Such is the outline of how we must incorporate the truth of the Immaculate Conception in people's lives. This is only a simple and incomplete sketch, but true as far as it goes. We are now on the second page of our Order's history, but it is beginning now. In the Order, everything belongs to the Immaculate, the souls of the religious, and the Nifakalanau. But how shall we bring all this about, and how far we must go? Ask Our Lady herself. In the Possession of the Immaculate Dearest Father, right now I am on a ship which is taking me to Italy. From Italy I should be going to Poland for the provincial chapter. And then? Then I will do whatever the Immaculate wills, so I am writing you on the ship. Thanks be to the Immaculate that the Cavalier in Italian is making such great progress. I wonder when she will want some printing press dedicated to her name and a friary dedicated especially to her. That is her affair. She can act when and as she wishes. Thank you very much for the copy of your yearbook. It is evident that the Immaculate has great plans for the future of her cavalier. You write, In reality, it is immaterial whether or not total consecration actually contains the spirit of the Knights of the Immaculate. Consecration to the Immaculate, however, can be more perfect or less perfect, because total personal consecration, as it is expressed in the first part of the act of consecration, belongs to the essence of our order, Every consecration is made in the spirit of the Immaculate, to the degree it becomes a consecration, without limits, and is broad and deep. Thus there can be no consecration without the spirit of the order. Perfect devotion to Mary, according to Grignion de Montfort, is most certainly and entirely in the spirit of the Immaculate, and it is exactly secundum intentionum, according to the intention, of Blessed Grignion. It is the same, but if you want to find differences, according to Blessed Grignion's opinion, they will be non-essential, non read the act of consecration, the one we use. You will find out from the first part that we consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate, sicut res et proprietas, as her property and possession. Servant can still say that he has certain human endowments, something that res or proprietas does not have. If in time others will invent expressions which will better signify dedication, offering of self, then they will come nearer to the spirit of the Immaculate. Such expressions as servant, son, thing, or, or possession are beautiful, but we desire something more. We desire to be hers without any reservation. We include the spirit of these expressions, and more than that. We will adopt any new ones that can and may be invented. In a word, we want to belong to her, to the Immaculate. Therefore, the devotion which Blessed Grignion teaches is really our devotion. However, if you have difficulty reconciling the goals of our order with total consecration to the Immaculate, look again at the act of consecration. The first part says, beseeching you to accept my whole and entire self as yours. This is limitless, total, complete dedication. And then, dispose of me of all my faculties of soul and body, of my whole life, death, and eternity, as it pleases you. That is the basic aim of the order, and the conditions listed on the order certificate, or rather just the first condition, corresponds to the same. The second is only an external symbol of the internal limitless consecration. That is the essence and necessary condition to join us. I am thinking of the spirit of the order, although one would not gain indulgences without being enrolled. Since we belong entirely to the Immaculate, let us do all within our power to convert and sanctify souls. It is the Immaculate herself who works through our med mediation. On the second part of the act, we say, Make use of me, if this is your will, entirely without reserve, to bring about what was said of you, so that in your immaculate and merciful hands I might become a useful instrument. Without doubt, everyone who has consecrated himself by some other heroic act may also recite the act of Blessed Grignion de Montfort, because the immaculate surely desires everything that is good. If it is not good, then the act is meaningless. Moreover, those acts become more perfect, because they become the mission of the immaculate, she will be carry them out in our stead much better than we ourselves could. All practices which serve to deepen our knowledge of the Immaculate and join us with her more closely are very much desirable. Please note that in the remarks at the bottom of the certificate it says, the means are only recommended. Although they are a result of total consecration, they do not belong to its essence. The essence depends on belonging to her without reservation. My dearest father, how much beauty is hidden in the words, being the Immaculate's. 
Who is the Immaculate? Who can understand that perfectly? Mary, the mother of God, Immaculate, or rather the Immaculate Conception, itself as she deigned to call herself at Lourdes. We know what mother means, but we cannot grasp with our minds and our limited brains what mother of God means. Only God com comprehends perfectly what the Immaculate means. One can understand a little what immaculately conceived means, but the Immaculate Conception is full of consoling mysteries. If the Immaculate permits, we will establish a Marian Academy, where we will study, teach, and publish for the whole world who the Immaculate is. It may be an academy with a Ph.D. in Mariology. This field is not much known, yet it is so necessary for practical living and for converting and sanctifying souls. She is God's. She belongs to God in a perfect way to the extent that she is as if a part of the Most Holy Trinity although she is a finite creature. Moreover, she is not only a handmaid, a daughter, a possession, etc., but also the mother of God. Here one is seized with giddiness. She is almost above God, as a mother is above her sons who must respect her. The Immaculate is a spouse of the Holy Spirit in an unspeakable way. She has the same son as the Heavenly Father has. What an ineffable family. We belong to her, to the Immaculate. We are hers without limits, most perfectly hers. We are, as it were, herself. Through our mediation, she loves the good God. With our poor heart, she loves her divine Son. We become the mediators through whom the Immaculate loves Jesus. And Jesus, considering us her, hers, and, as it were, a part of his beloved mother, loves her in us and through us. What a lovely mystery. We know about those under diabolical influence through whom the devil was thinking and acting. We want to be in her possession without any reservation. We want her to think, to speak, and to act through us. We desire to belong to the Immaculate, to the extent that nothing will remain in us that does not identify her, so that we may be annihilated in her, transformed into her, changed into her, that she alone remains, so that we may be as much hers as she is God's. She belongs to God, having become his mother, and we want to become the mother who would give the life of the Immaculate to every heart that exists, and to those that will still come into existence. That is, the, the, that is what the Order's purpose is, to bring her into every heart, to give her life to every heart. Thus entering these hearts and taking full possession of them, she may give birth to sweet Jesus, who is God, that he might grow in them in ages and perfection. What a magnificent mission. True? Divinizing man to the God-man through the mother of the God-man.